to most people, the 2022 Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl was just another football game. But to the Lao American community, it was a moment of great pride as two Lao last names battled it out. AJ Bongpachan rose from the youth football fields of Western Washington to playing in a sold out SoFi Stadium on national TV. Behind his rise, a strong work ethic, an NFL dream, and most importantly, a supportive family. After an incredible four years at Utah State, AJ has decided to finish out his college career by helping BYU make the transition into one of college football's top conferences, the Big 12. All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of C4 Podcast, Southeast Asian Athlete Achievement Through Adversity. Um, my name is Coach Andetka, and I'm here with my uh, co-host, John Messina, and we have uh, an amazing guest today. So again, the podcast, I mean, we want to talk about like adversity, right? We love hearing the stories of people that are accomplishing great things. And, you know, through that, they had to go through some obstacles to get there. You know, it makes the, to me, it makes the reward that much sweeter, right? So, but hey, if you guys haven't already, please go go ahead and, and follow our page on Facebook and on Instagram, Low American Sports. Uh, like, comment, share. If you guys know of any anybody that would be great, uh, you know, guests for you know that has an amazing story, please you know message us on uh, on uh, Facebook or Instagram. All right. So, without further ado, I will let John uh, introduce our guest. Yeah, today we're joined by AJ Vonkachan, and thank you to everybody who's been patient, um, AJ. We had numerous people reach out asking if we could get you on. They, they wanted to hear your story. We opted to wait till summer, knowing how busy a student athlete like you is. My own daughter is a college athlete. and we know There's not a lot of time during the school year and especially during the season. So um, we hope your summer is going well. We're glad to have you on. And a lot of the listeners will be very excited to hear your story. Before we jump into it, you know, we've been giving some shout outs to small businesses on here. If you'd like a shout out, just DM us send us a message through the allow America sports hall of fame or the podcast. We would be happy to do that. This one, we're actually going to give a shout out this time to a business in Laos, Sina coffee. I had the opportunity to try this amazing coffee when I was in Vientiane. It's actually owned by the uncle of Nara C. Havong episode 18, the wrestling coach, his son, Dawson Stanford wrestler was part of the Lao American athlete contingent along with my daughter at the sea games. We got to check out the coffee shop, the cafe, incredible coffee. They have locations around Laos. They actually grow their own coffee in the Pax Pakse region. region. Um, really cool sort of fusion of Lao and French um, flavors and ambiance. Uncle Sinook spent 30 years in France before going back to Laos to start up this coffee company. It's incredible. So if you're in Vingjing, Pakse, any of the major cities, find a Sinook coffee location. So with that, we are going to jump into the interview with AJ, AJ's coming to us uh, out of originally out of Washington. Now, uh, for the last several years, was at Utah State. Now, just signed with BYU. We're excited to see how that goes. So, AJ, welcome to the show. Start off with telling everybody a little bit about your origins in Laos, or your mom, or your dad's origins in Laos. That what you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I don't know it's a whole lot, but I mean, he was he's originally from, uh, I believe, seven. I can't oh, pronounce so, it. But Co was born there too. There it is. That's yeah, where yeah. I'm from. Perfect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I probably that's grew up where they're from. Brand new one back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where he's from, and then uh, they kind of made their way um, into Portland um, due to communism and you know kind of that whole ordeal, and then uh, you know kind of ended up in Portland, and then made his way down to to Washington, and that's kind of where I always grew up, and then that's kind of where most of my uh, Laos families at, and then kind of people all over, but that's kind of the majority of them. Okay. Yeah, so cool. your sponsors were from Portland, like your dad's sponsor was from Portland. Yeah, yeah I think so. Was? From yeah, from what I know is uh, kind of a church helped them out, and they kind of okay. ended up. Yeah, yeah, they kind of ended up in um, that area, that Portland area, and that's kind of where. where he yeah, that's a big. School. That's a big Lao community, um, right? Then, that's a good size Lao community. Yeah, for sure. I got I got some family still in Portland, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. I got some family still in Portland, and then uh, so I kind of I haven't been, I haven't been out there that um, recently, but uh, I kind of growing up, I used to kind of always visit there and try to go back and forth. So. 
cool. Yeah, well, cool. All right, well, tell us a little bit about your childhood, specifically how you end up getting into football, AJ. Yeah, good question. So I guess um, early on, I was kind of a, I want to say like a super big kid, but I was kind of like a, just wanted to lose weight, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of how I started off. And so I just needed some activity. So I actually ended up um, playing baseball, just kind of with the flyers they had at, the, you know, whatever the school, they kind of gave it to us. And then, um my mom kind of signed me up. And so that's kind of how I started with baseball. And uh, so it was that. And then I also did uh, Taekwondo kind of growing up. So that was kind of the two things um, just to be active. And um, that's kind of the two things that I, I started off with. And then through baseball, one of my baseball coaches, um, Lily coaches was actually, uh, he he had a football team too. So kind of literally football too, same thing. But, um, you know, I always wanted to play it, but my mom just never let me. She just was too afraid to uh, kind of put me in it. So after a while, uh, kind of went by and just, you know, me keep kept asking her because I still knew the coach. Yeah, I still played baseball. I knew the coach. And he said, just just come out. You know, it'll be – I think you'll really like it, you know. And so I was kind of a bigger kid. Um, so obviously he thought I would be good at it. And so after just convincing, convincing my mom to, you know, finally – letting me play, you know, she just, uh, you know, she ended up letting me, you know, the coaches talked her into it and, you know, um, you know, it just ended up working out. So I went from baseball, you know, I still played baseball, but ended up uh, picking up football probably can't remember the exact age, but I want to say, I want to say that fifth, fifth through sixth uh, grade that that age, or maybe even a little bit low as maybe fourth, you know, around there. But uh, it was a little later than, I guess, I want to say most kids, but, you know, I wasn't doing like the flag before and nothing. I just kind of went straight into the, the pads and stuff. So um, kind of did that. And yeah, I kind of fell in love with it right off the get. So, I mean, I ended up playing um, that and just playing defensive end. That's obviously kind of what I um, originally started playing throughout my um, just kind of little league, middle school, and then even high school. And then my first year in uh, Utah State too. So that was kind of the thing. Um, and yeah, I just kind of fell in love with it and was something that, you know, I felt that I wanted to play at the next level. Obviously I didn't know how, but I just knew it was going to take a lot of work at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, I just kept working and it ended up working out and, um, in my favor at the end of the day. So it's kind of my journey through football a little bit. So when you first saw football, was there a different position that you wanted to play? Like, did you dream about being the quarterback or running back or, and how did you get into, like, like I said, how did you get to defensive ends? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, kind of. So my uh, the, my baseball coach, he was a defensive end, and, and when he played, so he kind of naturally put me there. Uh, I I remember, I remember I did like a camp. It was like a try one of the tryouts. Like originally, like you could do like there was like different stations like for whatever position. Like I just remember trying out quarterback. I was like I could not throw the ball, so I was just like it's not for me right <laughs> there, you know, or off the bat. And then so. I tried a couple of different positions and obviously just ended up at defensive end. And I liked it, honestly, at the end of the day, it was pretty, I would say simple, but I could use my athleticism at a, at a young age to kind of just uh, make plays. And, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't a ton of thinking going on. They were just kind of just go, especially, you know, obviously little league, you're just going anyways, you know, so that was kind of where I started and then kind of transitioned to on the offensive side playing running back. So I just kind of did defensive end and running back and, you know, that was really fun, but I think I remember like the last year of the last year of like little league, uh, they implemented like a weight, a weight limit. So you couldn't like run the ball or uh -oh. even touch the ball if you were like over a certain amount of weight. I can't remember the weight, but so I couldn't play running back anymore. So I had to play tackle and still play defensive end, but offensive tackle and defensive end. That's kind of was my last year of uh little league. And then and, uh, going into middle school, uh, I played sixth grade. I didn't, I didn't do or seventh grade. I didn't do sixth grade. Because uh, I just ended up playing uh, my last year of uh, whatever it was called, Little League or Rick Kids. And then, um, yeah, so seventh grade was my first, like, school, middle school um, football and still play defensive end and then some tight end, but mostly mostly on the defensive side, work, which I focused on. But. Yeah, well, cool. Well, so you had a great high school career, but, you know, one of the things I noticed about you, AJ, is you kind of come out of a small town in western Washington or a smaller metro area. You know, my daughter's a college swimmer, but swimming is kind of easy because you just put your times in a database and people see them. It's very um, mm -hmm. objective football. You got to get noticed. And if you're not in a big football area or a big city, I mean, 
it's just a lot harder, right. Um, than, than, than some of the other sports. So how, tell us about the college recruiting process. Was it hard to sell yourself? Cause I think a lot of people could relate to this and we know a lot of people whose kids are trying to go through the process. So. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, obviously like my parents, uh, you know, my dad's from Laos and then my mom's from Mexico and like, they're not playing sports, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, they don't know a whole lot about that process. And like, I always knew like, that's something that I want to do. Like, yeah, I even say like people, you know, would ask me when I was younger, like what I want to do I was like, I want to be played professionally, you know, whatever it is, football, baseball, whatever. Like I wanted to do that, but obviously there's steps in between. And I knew that college was one of them, but like, you don't know like what the, what the steps are. You don't know what's the process or kind of what that is, but Basically, you know, from what I know is at high school, um, you know, I would always kind of just put my phone together on, on Huddle. I think it was called Huddle. Um, I think it's, it's, it's still use that in high school, uh, the kind of the mm-hmm. film outlet. But so I was going to kind of put my film together and uh, through Huddle. Obviously, freshman year, I kind of did that and kind of did that every single year. I think, honestly, I just did that because I thought it was cool, like, just to put them together, <laughs> the highlights together, right? But I think I knew I started seeing other people kind of post them on Twitter. Um, and that's kind of what uh what kind of start I seen buzz, you know, I seen guys get offers um through Twitter through Twitter, just posting them Twitter, posting their highlights on Twitter through Huddle. And it was mostly kind of the guys in um different areas. It wasn't like from where I was from, because where I was from at the time, honestly I couldn't even remember, you know, if there was a guy going like playing division one it was mostly kind of the smaller schools um i know the seattle area was like a bigger area where mm-hmm. kids were getting kind of offers and obviously it's a bigger city but yeah so it wasn't kind of it was kind of not common in that in my area kind of so that for that stuff but so i kind of just followed what i seen people doing honestly and you know posting my film on uh my posting my film on twitter right and it was just kind of the link to huddle and through that, that's when I started getting kind of messages and um, just follows from different coaches and from, you know, different schools, right? And uh, so it kind of just, that's how it started, kind of just follows, follows, and then you, you get messages, obviously, and you kind of just go through that process of, you know, they're asking you what's your, what's your school like, what's your transcripts like, um, that whole stuff. And obviously, they, they go through, um, the coaches come and visit you. Um, on campus and or at your school and I don't think necessarily it was uh that they were coming for me I think it was just kind of their area their recruiting area because uh what I didn't know is you know college coaches at schools like each coach will have a different area and so um you know it could be like you know Seattle would be one of the coaches areas or by you know so and forth depending on what school you are right um so I kind of kind of met coaches through that and uh so combination of that and many coaches through you know just coming passing by my school um you know that was kind of how it started then I did camps um and that was kind of the next step right and keep getting out there being competing against like other kids who were at the camps and um I remember my first offer wasn't until um I want to say after the summer going into my senior year that was kind of my first offer. It was Eastern Washington, which is a FCS school, uh, kind of nearby. It was like, I think it was like two hours away from you know where I live. But uh, yeah, that was my first offer, and it was kind of slow. Like you know, obviously I'm talking to a few different schools. I talked to the the two schools that I originally wanted to go to, which was Washington State and UW. Um, just talking to them, they didn't offer they didn't offer me right, but just kind of talking to them back and forth, going to the games. They invited me to the games and stuff take my family or whatever, but did those camps as well. I just didn't get the offer, got the Eastern Washington. And then kind of throughout my, throughout my senior year, kind of picked up a couple of different ones, more SCSs, Portland State, um, kind of, you know, that, that big sky conference. And then, but obviously, you know, I want, I'm trying to play at the highest level. I want to play, you know, for Washington State, UW, um, just in the hometown, you know, kind of stay home state, I guess. Uh, but they never came. And, you know, I was still looking for an FBS offer, which FBS is just, um, you know, kind of just a little bigger school or whatever. But um, I I, th- I think my first, yeah, my first FBS was Utah State. And then after I got Utah State, it was, uh, I want to say Air Force and then Colorado State. So Mountain West, still in the Mountain West. And I took my official visits out of high school. And I, it was, uh, I want to say Eastern Washington um Colorado State Air Force and uh I think it was like one more but 
Um, those were kind of the main ones. I actually didn't even take a visit to Utah State, but it was honestly just my relationship with the coaches at the time. Um, you know, I, I didn't take a visit there because, long story short, it was just they didn't have enough spots at the time, so I had to come in fall camp, uh, which is basically they just take a scholarship from the next year recruiting class, give it to me, but I have to wait till the full, um, I guess, year's over, which is the first day of fall camp. But, yeah, so that's just what I ended up shooting and it ended up working out. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you had an incredible career there, took them to a Mountain West, you know, championship. I mean, it's a team effort, but you were a big right. part of it. But, man, tell us about some of your proudest moments and what you did there at Utah State. Yeah, I think my proudest moments is just honestly just, just uh, you know, I can pinpoint one exact thing. Obviously, the, the Mountain West Championship was great. Like, I never won a championship in high school, but, uh, you know, being able to do that – at a college level, you know, as a was a great feeling, honestly, because you know you work so hard, you know, to all year long with the same group of guys, and being able to get that come on top at the end of the year was was great, right? So, but I think the biggest thing is honestly just um, just sticking to it, honestly. Ever since I got there, you know, like I knew I had to work hard because from the area I'm from, it's not a lot of guys going, you know, playing Division One, you know, one and then two, like there's not a lot of guys looking like me in the in these situation you know where i'm at you know you don't say there's not you know it's so um so that the, kind of those two things i knew i gotta have to do more you know than the than the other person so and you know i always try to get extra work all that just to put myself in the best situation you know and so that i can get on the field and you know i did that as a, at a as a freshman you know kind of allowed me to get on the field as a freshman um I also wasn't that good. I kind of was just out there just running around, kind of just <laughs> trying to see the ball, get ball. But, you know, it kind of helped me throughout my uh, the later years, kind of uh, being out there. The game slowed down for me and was able to kind of be out there and um, be an impact, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Go, go. Yeah, I, I want to go back a little bit, AJ. Um, yeah. You mentioned your, your mom and dad, uh, Lao and Mexican, right? Not, not Not very athletic and didn't know much about it. Tell us about like that experience, you know, like like growing up uh, with family. Did you get support? Did you get ridiculed? I mean, me, me, my parents didn't believe in athletics, right? So I got a lot of ridicule, you know, saying, mm -hmm. hey, I, I wanted to be a big, you know, I want to be a bodybuilder, right? And it's just like, mm -hmm. one, it was like, man, have you looked in the mirror? You're the ocean, you know, you're five feet tall, mm -hmm. you're 120 pounds. Yeah. You know, I got a lot of, and like, you know, like the ocean parents can be pretty, I don't know how your dad was, but they can be pretty rough when it comes to like, you ain't doing, you, you can't, you know? So how, yeah, how yeah. was it for you? I mean, I mean, you said like the area you're from, not too many people like, like, you know, uh, we're into, we're into what you were doing. So like, how was like, did you have a conflict in high school with social life and like, oh man, I got to go. I got to play football and other kids won't want to go out. Hey man, I want to go party. I want to hang out with my girl. Like tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I kind of started with my, my family. Uh, yeah. So they were, I was kind of fortunate, you know, my parents were very supportive at the end of the day. Like they knew I was very passionate about what I wanted to do and they've always been supportive. Uh, you know, my mom always kind of just stressed it, like, you know, go after, go after your goal, go after your dream. You know what I'm saying? But you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to be easy you know, you're going to have to put the work in. And yeah, that's kind of the big thing she always stressed to me. And, you know, my pops always supported me, supported me, you know, it was never no, you know, ridicule or, you know, backlash for what I wanted to do. Um, I would say maybe at the, at the extent when I was like younger, younger, you know, I, I like I said, people, would, my family sometimes would ask me like, um, or just people in general would ask me like, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And obviously as I'm saying, like, you know, I want to play professionally and obviously I got to, got a lot of work to do to get to that point but you know people would always give me the you know that's not really realistic so like what what do you actually want to do you know what I'm saying but that was kind of the thing but uh not nothing too crazy to the extent of you know not not a huge support you know now I got a, a ton of support um and even in high school but you know growing up um I wouldn't say that people were kind of trying to make me you know I, I seen people kind of hanging out and kind of doing all the, all these other things. But for me, it's like, I really enjoy kind of putting that extra work and kind of just, you know, going to the field by myself, getting, getting better at that, or, you know, kind of just per perfecting my craft so that, you know, I'm better, uh, you know, when it comes to, to the games and football, you know, that's what I found enjoyment in at the end of the day. And cause I knew like, 
if I can accomplish what I need to accomplish, you know, I, I can have fun, you know, down the road. So that's kind of how I always approach it at a young age and, you know, still how I approach it to this day. So. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I want to, you know, jumping back to your college career, there's a fun fact. Uh, we interviewed Lo Van Pham. He's an NFL official now, but a few years ago, he was a college official when he interviewed him. And he actually officiated the Mountain West game, championship game that you were that you were in. Lowe was born in Southern Laos, just like your dad. So we thought that was kind of a funny, funny oh, wow. thing. Yeah, One I of the officials, that. yeah, and your dad were born kind of in the same same area. And and Lowe came to the U.S. as a kid. He actually grew up in the same neighborhood as my wife. Uh, went to the same elementary school and all that. So just kind of a funny oh, fact wow, about crazy. your career. But the ultimate funny fact was, I mean, you got you went to the L.A. Bowl, and it was kind of almost a historic event for the Lao community. Everybody was talking about it because you had two Lao names on each side of the field, one on offense, one on defense, going head to head. And nobody had ever seen that before. And we posted a photo that I think it was that your mom took of you and Noyce from mm -hmm. Oregon yeah. state at the game. And it kind of went viral. It got several hundred thousand um, views and stuff and reshares and hundreds and hundreds of people like resharing it. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. so that was just kind of cool, but what do you think that moment meant for the Lao community? Um, you know, and, and, you know, why do you think it brought so much pride? Yeah, honestly, like, you know, my, so my, my dad knows, knows his parents. So originally, like I kind of knew uh, of him already and kind of, we, we kind of spoke before leading up to the game, you know what I'm saying? Just, uh, briefly, but obviously I've never met him in person, but, uh, yeah, so it was kind of mostly just. I'm thinking like, you know, it's going to be cool because, you know, our parents know each other and kind of close family know each other. So that was kind of the extent that, you know, from what I knew. And, you know, I just wanted to do, make sure I took a picture with them and, you know, likewise with him just because um, there was some history with, with the families. But, uh, no, I, I didn't expect it to kind of, you know, be seen in that light, you know what I'm saying? So for people to um, just see it up from all over, you know, when you guys posted it and get just uh, get so much love at the end of the day, you know, which is, which is awesome. But, you know, obviously I think it's because of the, you know, you just don't see that every day, you know, maybe, and, you know, two, uh, two Laos, you know, kids going, you know, playing at that level, you know, basically, you know, almost at the high, you know, basically at the highest stage in college football, you know? And so it was, uh, I think I thought it was great and, you know, it's, it was awesome to kind of just experience that and, you know, kind of see the love that and support that I got. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think cause it was, yeah, it was on national TV, right. Rig brand new stadium in LA bowl game. Everybody's watching it. And, and we got so many comments, so many DMS and like I said, hundreds of thousands of people, literally, I don't know if that, I don't know what the definition of viral is, but we, we consider that one viral, right? Co that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like you said, it's rare, right? I mean, you don't see that, and especially in the Laotian community, right? I mean, the athletes, athletes are very rare. I mean, if you look at, yeah. like, if you follow our, our Hall of Fame page, there aren't that many athletes. Like, we're we're almost like running out. We need we need to hurry, you know hurry up and let this new generation, like you guys, come on and take over. So right now, there's like a right. little like, like a stalemate of uh, you know yeah. of, of people coming up. So. I, I don't know. There's more Lao players in Division One football now than ever, and you, you're yeah. in there. Noyce just he graduated, but we, then you got the Pomachan brothers. You got Malachi Moore, mm -hmm. and there's probably some others coming up that we don't even know about. Um, you, you follow but, those guys at all, or you speak to them on uh, social media or anything? You know of each other? I, I don't. I don't. To be honest, I mean, I kind of obviously know about them, yeah. and uh, you know, you know, just through kind of social media. But no, I don't yeah. kind of keep keep a close contact with them yeah. but uh i know i know we played uh you know bam up i think it was last year so obviously got to play oh, against yeah. him a little bit but, yeah malachi yeah. was there i don't know you probably don't you don't play florida state or university of florida there's ty chuck yow jack yow bowman on there his That's older right. brother used yeah. to play at northwestern so they're out they're out there uh, but yeah, just to have sure. two i think the fact that two of them came together in that big of a game right was just what made yeah. it which made it really, oh, well, especially, really especially cool. with loud last names right yeah, yeah, exactly. that's true because yeah, people don't even notice if you have like cer some, certain last names, right? Uh, you wouldn't even know. <laughs> so yeah. that stands out. That you know the the twelve exactly. letters across the back or fourteen letters across <laughs> the back of the jersey. For sure. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the minimum. So yeah, so a a AJ, did, do you have uh, were you born with a Laotian name or what? What does AJ stand for? Yeah, so my first name is uh, Eknalon. 
And then okay. my middle name is just Jaren. So as you get the AJ and then oh. so just Eknalon, Jaren, and then Wonka John. Did, so I'm sure your father named you. Did he tell you the meaning of that? Uh, he did a while back. I can't remember. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong. <laughs> if it was, I think it was my grandma who named yeah. me, actually. But uh, yeah, so it was. Uh, yeah. well, we can uh, ask there's, you always meaning, there's always meanings behind those names, man. We thought you oh, would know. Sure. Sure. Huh? We thought you would know. What? We thought you would know the meaning of it. No? Say, say it again. Can you spell it for me? Yeah, it's A E A K N A L O U N G. Acknalong. Acknalong. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough one. We'll, we'll get it from your parents. <laughs> um, we, but we anyway, no, I, 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 I know it's something, I know it has something to do with me. I know it has something to do with like being number one, but it's like not exactly the translation. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'd have to ask them. I'd have to ask them. Yeah, for sure. Oh, cool. You know, when you're younger, you don't care. Like, I think I hated my I hated my first name because I hated spelling it, and people always made fun of me. And put the pawn, put the pawn, right? And having this twelve yeah. letters. But now, as you're older, you look back and you, you think of the meeting, and like you know, especially my, my dad gave it to me, and like yeah, it, it means a lot more now. You know, when you're young, you don't think exactly. about it. You know, but as, right. as you get older, you'll you'll get more attached to that name and the meaning, and you know. So yeah, 100%. there are special there are special meanings to it though, for sure. Yeah, cool. Well, anyway, you 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 had an awesome career at Utah State, but you're not done in college. You're moving on. You're kind of moving up, I guess, the conference ladder. Tell us what's next for you, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, so I hit the portal. Obviously, you guys kind of see into social media and whatnot, but I hit the portal and then kind of took a few visits at the portal on just posting, you know, kind of just pictures and whatnot. I think my mom posts the pictures frequently, but uh, after each visit. But, yeah, I ended up choosing BYU, and honestly, it just came down to – because I went to went to Washington State, which is originally one of the schools I wanted to go, go to out of high school, um, BYU, and then it was Minnesota and South Carolina. So those are kind of the four that I went to. Um, there was a couple more that I was supposed to go on, but I just got I just got super, like, worn out from the – from the traveling, honestly. So I just ended up locking it in. But yeah, I ended up choosing BYU and honestly just came down to the relationships I had with the coaches here. Cause uh so my position coach who is here now is the one who brought me to Utah State. So obviously there's that. And um, you know, with my timeline it's unique just because I only have really less than a year. You know, obviously missing spring ball um going into the season, you know, is huge, right? I kinda so I kinda just wanted something familiar where I can kind of jump in, you know, kind of know the defense um, or played in the defense already. Um, so that was kind of the biggest thing. And obviously they're going to the big 12. So that helps, you know, so it kind of, you know, big football around, you know, regardless of what, what school I were to choose, which is, uh, you know, ultimately why not for my last year, you know, to kind of prove that I can, you know, do at the next level. So what, what better way to just, you know, kind of ball out, uh, in a, in these bigger conferences. So, yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. Obviously, there's work to do, but, uh, you know, just kind of getting after it. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. We're excited to see what you do in the Big 12 um, with BYU there. That'll be really exciting. The, the question on everybody's mind is, is, is trying to enter the NFL draft in the future for you? I know that's... Say it again, uh, sorry. You, you NFL out. draft, is that in the future for you to enter it, to at least try to go to the combines, try to... Oh, get yeah, in? yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. I mean, that's kind of, you know, I wouldn't um, put in all this extra time and effort, you know, to not, you know what I'm saying? It's always been a, a goal of mine and, you know, I wouldn't just come this far to just try to get this yeah. far, you know? So it's for sure, it's for sure a goal of mine. And, you know, it's obviously a lot of work to be done, but, uh, you know, that's kind of the the main goal for me at this point to put myself in the best position to get that opportunity. Yeah, that's that's good. So we may have two Lao Americans in the NFL draft next year. You and Malachi Moore, um, both probably taking a run at it. Hopefully, so that'll be really exciting. Um, well, man, um, any final advice you have for anybody out there that wants to play at this level in college, AJ? What what advice would you give them? Yeah, I think the biggest advice is just, um, you know, I you know I wish, you know, there was kind of a you know, a secret recipe that I could get, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just that, that hard work, you know what I'm saying? That hard work and, and grind that extra time you're gonna have to put in. Obviously the circumstances very right. Like, you know, I was kind of blessed with 
kind of being, uh, you know, the size that I am for my parents, you know, my parents are pretty small, but it ended up being less than that, that aspect, you know, so, you know, depending on where you're at, you know, obviously you have to put more work. If you're a little bit smaller, like you're going to have to make it up in, in the what, what other is, areas, what is right? Your height what is your height and weight? Yeah. So my height is, uh, I'm 6'2", yeah, 6'2", 235. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, and how tall are your parents? They're like they're short, right? I've seen the pictures that yeah. you tower over them, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like they're about five five. My dad's five five, and then my, my mom's five five too. So yeah, yeah but they're pretty small. <laughs> you know, you don't hear but... Kim Lee Butch is over six feet, man. I mean, now you are, right? I mean, but man, years ago, and like when I was growing up as a kid, like man, like six two two thirty five, man, that's what that's that's huge. Yeah, it's different yeah, here I mean, in America. Yes. The nutrition yeah. or whatever. I don't know. Oh, the milk. Exactly. Get some yeah. weird and drink milk. Yeah. Well, exactly. Cool. <laughs> well, well, awesome. Well, Co, you got anything else for AJ? No, man. Hey, thanks you. Uh, you know, thank thanks for coming on, man. It's great. Um, I know you got a busy schedule, and we, you know, and I know we were trying trying this for a while, man. But yeah, I mean, yeah. to have a future NFL star, I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, man. A future NFL star on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate yeah. you guys. And I was hey, the last, I the last guy we had on that was trying to make the NFL, Low Van Fam, made it. He made it after our interview, so I don't know if we had anything yeah. to do with it, Co. But hey, uh, he went after, <laughs> after he was college, then he went to USFL. Yeah, like for like a season, then boom, jumped into the NFL. That's man. right. Yeah, is it official? So from, from my dad's hometown, I'd say. Man, yep. yeah, well, cool. All right, man. Well, hey, we appreciate the time, AJ. Great talking to you. Yeah, I appreciate so. you guys. Thank you so much for having me. And if right, uh, you guys need anything for me, yep. Well, do, man. Thank you. Thanks so much. Right. Yep. The C4 Podcast is brought to you by the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame. Visit us on the web at laoamericansports.com, celebrating the first, inspiring the next.